the little ballerina. Once upon a time, there was a little ballerina. The little ballerina had a suitcase that looked like a little pink drum. When the children on the bus saw the little pink case, they knew it was ballet day. In the case the little ballerina carried, one pair of pale pink tights with seams. One black leotard just like the kind the big girls wore. One pair of soft black slippers with elastic bands that, that she had sewed on herself. Talcum powder one shape for each slipper, one fat rubber band, and four bobby pins to put her hair up into an almost bun. First position, second position, third position, fourth. In the playground, a little ballerina stood by the jungle gym and practiced moving her arms and feet in the five basic ballet positions. Come play, her friends begged. But second position, third pos position, fourth position, fifth. The little ballerina wouldn't play today she had to practice for tomorrow was the big recital she practiced until the bell rang and recess was over after school the little ballerina ran all the way to the big white house on sycamore street where mamsel taught ballet Mamsel was what the girls called their ballet teacher. Down in the basement, the girls all changed together. The hooks down low were for the little girls. The hooks up high were for the big girls. Someday, someday, said the little ballerina, looking up at the hook. I'll hang, my, I'll hang my clothes up there. She put her hair up and almost spun after dressing as quickly as she could. Skipping every other step, she ran upstairs to peek in the window at the biggest girls. They were crowding around Mamsel, smiling at her and clapping. Everyone knew what that meant. Thank you, Mamsel, for a class well taught. The little ballerina knew, as everyone else knew, to that little girls didn't clap for Mamsel. They certain time. Mamsel started class at the bar. The long handrail used for balancing that ran all the way down one side of the room. Along the wall of mirror, first plies soft and graceful. Plie in French refers to a movement in which the knees are bent while the back is held straight. Breathe, said Mamsel. Breathe, little girls. And the little ballerina remembered to breathe. It was hard not to hold her breath well, when 
she was doing something so very difficult. Frappes came next. Yami Frappes, the little ballerina, like to call him because the word reminded her of a special milkshake her aunt had treated her to in Boston. She did for pays by beating her foot lightly against the inside of her ankle. Concentrate. Mamsel told them again and again. Stop squinching those toes, Mamsel said to the little ballerina. Squinching was a word Mamsel had learned from her girls. Squinching happened when her girls concentrated a little too hard. And in an order so rapid that the little ballerina's head began to swing, swim. Mamsel had them do. Mamsel had them do. Put tea bat months and grand bat months. And then it was time to do center work. Center work was done way out in the center of the room without any bar. The girls spread out, arms length apart, three deep littlest ones up front, the bigger girls in back tried to hide themselves. Don't you know you cannot hide in a room full of mirrors? They started with a, a dodge eel. A dodge eel means slow. It was hard at first not to lose her balance, but the little ballerina knew how important it was to learn to bounce. Tour is a French word that means a turn. The tour or pirouette was the hardest step of all, to turn round and round without ever getting dizzy, was something the little ballerina still had to learn. She picked a spot to stare at with all her might and never took her eyes off it. The spot held, helped her to feel as if only her body were turning while her head stood stock still. The head was the part that got dizzy. The little ballerina's favorite spot was an old paint smear on the floor that looked like a yellow rose. After class, the little ballerina quickly ran up and certified for Mansell. I'm ready, Mansell, for tomorrow, Mansell. Be at the big auditorium at five o'clock sharp. And don't forget your costume, little ballerina. The little ballerina nodded and smiled. Tomorrow was the big recital. That night when the sky was velvety black and the stars Shown like diamonds, the little ballerina slept and dreamed she was a princess who danced on her toes without ever getting dizzy. 
The princess danced round and round, holding a spindle in her hand. The spindle was a gift from the wicked fairy, who hadn't been invited to her Christine 16 long years ago. The princess prickled her finger on the spindle and fell dead. But the lilac fairy who had been invited to the Christian cast at cast a spell that made the princess sleep instead. She slept on and on in a castle overgrown with bears. She slept a hundred years or more until one day a handsome prince followed the lilac fairy through the brambles to the bed where the princess lay sleeping, kissed her on the lips, and she awoke. And that very day, they were married. They danced a pot of beret, a pot of duck, a dance for two persons. In the corpse were all the fairies who had been at her christening. The lilac fairy, the fountain fairy, and the fairies of the crystal in the glade. Even the sunbeam fairy was there. And for a few moments, she danced a little dance all by herself in the center of the palace hall. And then the whole company danced together in a colorful swirl until the little ballerina woke up. She jumped out of bed and said with a cry, Today is recital day. That night in the dressing room of the big auditorium, the little ballerina got dressed. Her mother helped put on green eye shadow, pink blush, red lipstick, and orange sun rays shooting out from her eyebrows. The little ballerina was a sunbeam. On her hair there was a hair there was hairspray to hold her almost bun together and a big orange headdress made of feathers that bobbed and waved when she moved. The mothers and a few fathers had made the costumes. They were made of wonderful stuff, taffeta and satin silk and gauze. All died in glorious colors. The mothers and a few fathers had dyed the girls' tights and leotards to match their costumes. Mamsel came backstage and visited her girls. Remember to breathe, little girls, she said. The little ballerina nodded. Yes, Mamsel, she whispered. How her heart fluttered. Then the music began and the curtain rang up and the dance of the sunbeam began. The little ballerina danced the steps of the dance as if she'd known them always, as if she'd learned them in a dream. Afterward, her father and mother came backstage and gave her flowers. She sergeized and said, Did you see when I twitched my nose? 
Never, said her father. Some beams don't have noses. Her parents asked her to choose a place to have dinner, any place in town. The hot shop place, the little ballerina said, for a cheeseburger and a chocolate shake. At the hot shop, the little ballerina looked around and blinked at and yawned and stretched the other people and stretched. The other people there stared and smiled at the little ballerina in her sunbeam costume. She smiled back simply. In the car riding home, the little ballerina wondered if she'd ever been up this late before, and her head grew heavy as someone whispered, go to sleep. Little ballerina, little ballerina, and rest.